What's going on guys and girls? Coach Luca here from Vigor Ground Fitness and Performance with my man Theo Bowie aka Theosaurus Flex and a lot of AKAs that we're not even going to cover today. <laughs> but, right, so this is the first edition of Muscle Corner and in Muscle Corner what we're going to do is, you guessed it, right, we're going to talk a lot about muscle, muscle building more than anything else, but also just performance as well, right? So, um, you know, Theo's one of the coaches here at Vigor Ground, but more than anything, the reason why we're doing the muscle corner uh, with him, and we'll be doing it with him, is because he's made a pretty, say, pretty crazy transformation in the last uh, year plus, uh, and uh, I wish we might even be able to throw in that before and after so you guys kind of see, you know, uh, where he was and where he is now, but he's put on over 50 pounds of, of muscle while uh, probably dropping body fat. Yeah, yeah drop, so over 50 pounds of muscle while drop, dropping body fat, so... Um, you know, but it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. And, and, and like I said, before that, he was a pretty skinny kid. So, you know, one of the things that we're, so we're going to start this off with obviously somebody that's went through the transformation and, you know, coaches a lot of people here at Vigor through their own transformations and putting on, putting on muscle. So, you know, I wanted to start off with just, you know, asking Theo, you know, what, cause first of all, what, you know, tell us a little bit about. I'll say the struggles that you had, you know, before you kind of broke through that plateau. Because I know that, you know, I know that you were training. I know you were doing stuff. But, you know, for a lot of people that are watching, you know, that, that may, maybe, um, I'm just say, having struggles or problems with putting on muscle, you know, improving their lifts, um, getting stronger. You know, what was the, what would, would you say, let, let's just ask, what, what did you do before, you know, you had a, a bit of a breakthrough and started, like, seeing a lot of different, a lot of changes? So really, I mean, I worked at a at a big box gym, um, so obviously that stuff was accessible to me. But I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a coach there to to take me through, um, you know, different programs, you know, proper progressions, proper technique, um, you know, things like that. So for me, you know, I got my stuff out of, you know, like a muscle and fitness magazine. Mm -hmm. So like the the very cookie cutter um, bodybuilding, um, you know, uh, type of programs. So for that stuff, you know. That stuff, I didn't know whether I go four weeks, six weeks, 12 weeks, things like that, right? So I just kind of did that stuff, was going in, in and out of the gyms, um, and, and wasn't really uh, too consistent with that as well, right? So I'd have, you know, for example, I did like a, a program that Arnold Schwarzenegger had in, in muscle hey, and fitness. Let's so, not talk bad about Arnie. <laughs> so, like, you know, obviously, you know, I'm not Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So yep. there was a lot of volume in that, in that program um, and, and stuff that I wasn't really sure how to do. So, um, you know, some stuff I cut out, um, you know, and I didn't really know where to go from there. Right. So, I mean, you'd say that, like, one of the things basically was, you know, you do work, but it was, you never really knew if you were working towards your goal and if it right. was the right thing to go, right? right. And I'm going to kind of, like, pull away just for a second and, um, you know, go back to something that Theo said that was, that was important. And one of the things, one of the, I, I'll say, things that I think are really important is, um, you know, mastering the lifts, or, or should I say mastering the lifts? But, you know, when you're, when you're going into training, um, you know, if you're not doing lifts right with good form, right, it really can kind of like hamper a lot of stuff. One, because you start getting nagging injuries and you can hurt yourself. And then you start thinking like, well, that's not good for me. Like, the, you know, the squat's not good for me or the deadlift's not good for me because you're doing it wrong. And you go like, man, I, you know, I know what they say. It's a good lift, but my back hurts every time. This hurts, that hurts. My knees are banged up. So, you know, what he brought up in the sense that, you know, you, you, you have to, um, I would say one of the key points is that you have to be proficient at the lifts. Like, you don't have to master, but you have to be proficient at the lifts, right, to be able to do well on programs, period. Um, number two thing is, like, I don't, you know, uh, like I said, a lot of programs can work, but, you know, did it work for him? And, you know, going from there, I was going to go right into the next point, right, and, and, and I think this is a big one, is... Was do you think that one of the breakthroughs for you was nutrition? Yeah, that was huge because at first, you know, I was like, you know, I was a skinny kid, of course. So I thought that anything that I could eat was was going to be OK. Right. So, you know, like I would get like, you know, 
Tostino's pizzas, um, DiGiorno's pizzas. I would eat, you know, tons of burgers, even like fast food, right? We're, we're about to get some marketing money here. <laughs> All right. For sure. So, like, you know, I just thought that anything I ate would, would really, um, you know, would help me put on mass, which, which wasn't which wasn't the case, right? So I think I, I got, I started at about 150 pounds um, and I put on, you know, I think about 20 pounds um, at that point, just eating, you know, kind of whatever I wanted. Um, you know, I, I kind of came here and, and started working with, with you and Cody and really started getting to more into the clean eating. Now, I started eating more, right? But at the same time, I think the the calories, um, you know, kind of took a hit, right? So yep. I was kind of, yep. I was kind of nervous about that. I was like, you know, is this really going to work for me, right? But my pro, my protein intake went up. I was eating the right carbs, right? I was eating a lot cleaner, so I felt better. I was able to, to hit my lifts harder, right? So that's where I think I really progressed there and was able to to get past that that twenty pound mark, right? Because yep. I couldn't get past one seventy for a long time, right? And I think that's where I was like, okay, well. I'm not really doing anything. What's what's really the point, right? And I got discouraged. So I mean, that that's one of the key points too, right here. You're gonna you're gonna hit plateaus. Number one, right? Things are gonna work. So you're training. Um, you know, for someone like you, obviously, you could eat a lot of that stuff, mm -hmm. put on weight, and you know, it wasn't bad weight, right? You put on muscle. Um, but at a certain point in time, so one of the things that that I was gonna actually bring up is, um, you know, uh, the whole having a goal and and. When you're trying to put on muscle, like awareness, you know, awareness is huge and awareness precedes change in a sense that, you know, at that point in time, did you, did you know how much you were eating? Like, you know, calorie wise and things like that, no. you, you know, you didn't really track any of that. No. So we, you know, one of the first things we said like, Hey, you know, let's set a goal. So here, if you're listening um, and you're trying to put on muscle, like you, you know, you're frustrated and you kind of hit a plateau. Number one, start journaling. Start writing down what you're eating so you see your calories. And, you know, if you can do your macros, that, that's great too. But especially calories, we have a simple formula, right? We could go into more kind of like detailed stuff. But a really simple formula is take your body weight, multiply it by 16, and then add 300 calories. So for, you know, somebody that's 200 pounds, because we can round it up, it's pretty easy, right? So 200 pounds times 16 is 3,200 calories plus 300 is 3,500 calories. Right, so that would be your daily intake, and um, and what we do is we just track it every two weeks and uh, see where the weight. You know, if the weight is moving up too fast, that means we're probably adding a little bit too much fat because if you're adding, you know, four or five pounds uh, every couple of weeks, that's, you know, that there may be some some fat going along with that. And if if it's not moving, we're actually going to bump the calories up. But the main thing to 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 take out of that is you have a goal, right? There's a kind of general guideline that you can stick to. And what you'll notice is the same thing kind of like that, you know, Theo notices like once you start tracking stuff and seeing what you're doing, you might be, you might be way off, right? Because you're like, oh man, I'm eating all the time and, you know, I'm, I'm constantly taking in food. There's no way I'm not eating enough, right? I don't, I don't, it's, it's my genetics. It has to be the genetics. It has to be this and that. And then you put it down on paper and you actually see, number one, you know, you might be really short on calories, especially consistently, right? Consistently throughout the week. And two, you know, the way that the, the food that you're intaking may not be the best food for muscle growth and health as well. Like, you know, how you feel and like you said, right, that your performance went up right. when you started eating cleaner and you started feeling better. And guess what? You know, feel, feeling better is going to feeling better is going to make you train better, period. Um, so apart, you know, because once you kind of broke through that 20 pounds, um, you know, obviously you put on another 30 or 30 plus now. And um, what would you say if, you know, t if top three. Um, you know, just top three things that you would uh, kind of recommend or say would be your advice to someone that's frustrated hitting the plateau but wants to, you know, get bigger and grow and, and stuff like that. What would be the top three tips that were important to you that you would recommend to someone else? Well, first of all, for me, I think reaching out to a, a coach or somebody who actually knows or who's been there, right? So obviously, you know, you've been there and you've been that person who, who I reached out to for, for programming, right? Mm -hmm. Number one. So it was, it was more than, uh, you know, just going into the gym and saying, okay, I'm going to lift heavy, right? And then, you know, for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then I'm going to shake, right? Mm -hmm. So I think reaching out to somebody um, or even, like, you know, seeking advice, um, you know, how to, how to break through that plateau mm -hmm. is going to be number one, right? That was for me. Number two was, was the, the nutrition aspect of things, right? So I, I figured out that, you know, just eating anything that I wanted – 
um, throughout the day um, wasn't going to help. Um, so I had to get some advice on that as well. Um, and then, you know, adding in, I think, consistency, man. I, I think that kind of goes along with, with number one, mm -hmm. right, was, was reaching out to somebody, um, getting the programming, but also doing it with consistency and putting in the effort, man. So, I think those were the, probably the three big things for me. So if you, I mean, if we break those down, like two of those, if you think about it, two of those it contain structure, right? You got, remember, right, if you don't know what you're doing, how do you know where you're going? So really becoming aware of what you are doing, you know, even if you're following a program from a magazine or from, you know, and, and it's from a, you know, from a reputable coach. I mean, some of the magazines have great coaches writing for them, and it may be a good program for you, but still you got to do it. I would say the right way in a sense that, hey, you, you should be doing lift swell. Even if, you, if you, even if you hire a coach for a couple of sessions to show you how to squat, deadlift, and gives you the coaching cues, you're already ahead of the game there. Um, number two, structure. To even, like I said, if you're not, you know, super knowledgeable about nutrition, to where you start tracking what you're doing. Because, like I said, once you know what you're doing, it's a huge first step to knowing where you want to, you know, to, know, to, know, to knowing where you're going to go. Because um, many people will ask them a question like, so, hey, you know, what if, how many calories do you eat? How many, how much, what did you do last week? And, you know, it's like, oh, I'm not sure. Are you journaling it, right? Are you putting down your training? It's really difficult. Imagine if you had a business and, you know, the accountant comes in and is like, hey, listen, we need your, uh, your expenses and, and, and what's coming in, what's coming out. And you go like, I'm not sure. <laughs> they can't really help you. And um, same thing is like awareness precedes change. And those are two humongous factors. And then number three, I'll, you know, I'll kind of, uh, jump in here and say, you know, with Theo, the consistency, um, you know, has been huge. Even on the nutritional part, it definitely wasn't 100%, right? No, so it wasn't 100%. No. But it was 80% over a year plus, right? So as that consistency builds up, and, and I can say that, you know, in, in, in a year plus, you, I mean, apart from being sick, how many training sessions did you miss? Not many. Yeah, right? not many. Right? So, it's, you know, that consistency, and even in a shorter time frame, right? I mean, we see it here all the time, and a lot of Theo's clients, you know, you take a three-month block, and you start, you know, putting in structure to a program, right? So you're getting what you need out of it. Maybe, you know, if right now you've been working in a 12 to 15 rep range, right? What if you started going into a three to five rep range for your main lifts, right? Uh, think about that as, as far as you know, the body adapts to repetitions faster than it adapts to exercises. You don't, you, you only need very small exercise variations, like going from box squat to front squat to sandbag squats to, right? W whereas the rep ranges is what we adapt to fast. So, hey, if you've been doing high rep ranges, going to the lower rep ranges and then into the mids. And like I said, you know, but have some structure in building forward. Become aware of what you're doing right now with your calories and what, what type of food you're taking in and start writing it out. And I guarantee you just those steps will help you out. And then if you're doing four training sessions a week, right, four weeks a month, that's 16. And in three months, that's 48 sessions, right? If you only miss two sessions out of 48, you start putting those things into place, I guarantee you you're going to start seeing results, right? I mean, and that's, um, and I think that's one of the key things. It's like they're not really crazy scientific facts that we're going over, right? But right. I mean, but there are things that move you in the right direction. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll say one more thing um, as far as, you know, if, if somebody is, um, I would say, because I think actually this was, was something that we talked about. When you, were, uh, when you were trying to put on muscle and, you know, you're training at that point in time, you were doing quite a bit of conditioning. Yeah, so I would do like two days a week, um, either sprints, hill sprints, um, or even just coming to boot camp here, mm -hmm. some, some type of uh, high intensity stuff. But, um, you know, I wasn't doing anything. I, I think to kind of also go back to, um, you know, we, we talked about rep ranges earlier too. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, doing less of, of, or more of less was, was another big thing for me too, because okay. I think I see a lot of people who are in the gym for, you know, like a, you know, two hours or three yeah. hours and, and they think you that, that you know, like burning out is, uh -huh. you know, and, and leaving the gym barely able to, to drive home or, or put their foot on the gas pedal, right, is, That's a, is, is a good thing, right? So point. I think I was able to leave here and feel like I was doing more, but I could continually get stronger week in and week out. So uh, great point, right? So stimulus recovery, right? So, uh, a lot of times when someone is not getting, for instance, results, the mentality is like, well, I'm going to do more. I'm going to add more volume. 
I'm going to smash myself into the ground more, where the, the answer may actually lie in your recovery. So remember, nutrition is a big part of recovery. So it may be that, you know, what you need to do is have better recovery strategies, right? And maybe it's upping the intensity in a shorter amount of time. And, you know, we hear a lot about, like, how long you can, you know, once you start going past a certain amount of time, some people say an hour, I, I'd say it depends, but, you know, you're, where your, I would say, testosterone levels start dropping and you start, you know, getting less out of that training session, right? So it's, I think it's more important to keep the quality uh, of the training session high and the consistency versus, you know, coming in and smashing yourself, then the next time your training session is not really that good. See, that's part of structure, right? If you have a structured training program, then you know what you're doing when. So, you know, a, a lot of our training cycles, we have a back off week, right? So we're training our ass off for three weeks, um, cycling a little bit, and then we have a back off week where you kind of bring it down a little bit so that the body can recover before we go into week five. And so that's something really important to think about because, right, that, that's frustrating. You, you put in a ton of work and then yeah. you go harder and you're not seeing results. But remember, like, when your body can't, you know, you, you build when you recover. So if your body can't recover, guess what, right, that, that you're not going to be building as much muscle as you can because your, your body is going to basically, I don't want to say shut down, but slow, slow the process down because it doesn't feel like it can recover from it, right? So great point on that one. Uh, Going from to the conditioning part is one thing that we see is people that want to build a bunch of muscle and put on muscle doing too much conditioning, right? Especially like steady state cardio and, you know, three, four hard, hard, long conditioning sessions a week. It's competing goals, right? So you want to put on muscle, you want to get stronger, but you're doing a ton of conditioning. Um, and like Theo said, you know, you were doing short, intense, right? Either hill sprints, prowlers, sleds things like that, or, or short boot camps, um, and only about twice a week, and for some, we'll cut it down to once, um, and we may give them recovery circuits at a steady state tempo, uh, but things that just don't interfere, like I said, with, with the muscle building process, and I, I mean, I think conditioning is very beneficial, even if you are putting on muscle, um, but you just got to make sure that, you know, you're not doing 5K runs and you know, doing four or five or three or four conditioning sessions a week and then five training sessions a week for, you know, lifting weights. And then remember, your expenditure of calories is going to be huge. And, you know, you're probably not taking in as much as you should. So something to really, really think about. Um, apart from that, man, we got, you got any closing thoughts that, um, that, that I mean, put it, put it this way. I'll, I'll give you a closing thought as far as... Um, as far as when it, when it comes to anything and, you know, the word consistency is like, hey, if you constantly keep learning and surround yourself, this is huge, the environment, right? Surround yourself with an environment of people that want to get better, um, that are hard workers, that are hustlers, that are trying to constantly learn. It's really almost impossible not to succeed over time, right, if you're consistent with it. So even if, like I said, you're, you, you might not be able to get a coach, Find a group of people that are really, you know, training hard. They, they, they study what, you know, uh, I would say lifting and, and what works and what doesn't work. And then surround yourself in that environment so that I guarantee you that you will improve, right? If you're around people that are you're working to improve or pushing themselves, you're definitely going to, you know, do better. Yeah, I agree. And that's something that I was going to say, too, because any time that I found that I was really training by myself, right, it was I, I was motivated for about three, three, four months or so, right? But if... I was to surround myself with people like I did here, right? Like, not only was I motivated, but I, I, would, I would keep doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So if I found myself, you know, sloughing, somebody else would, like you, would come in and, Always. and, and charge me <laughs> up, right? So it yeah. became more of an inspirational thing, right? Because motivation is, is very short-term or temporary, mm -hmm. right? Whereas inspiration lasts a lot longer, and I think that's why I've been so successful. Yeah. And the thing is, even for me, you know, it's like I, I'm – I, I believe to be self, very self-motivated, but, you know, we train in an environment where somebody's down one day, other person brings the energy, we end up always having a great training session. You know, so to, take that into play, you know, support your team, the environment is, is one of the key factors as well. So we're kind of running out of time today. Um, you know, I think great episode for the first uh, Muscle Corner, but we're going to keep, like I said, if you guys got questions, please ask us questions, and we'll go specific into exactly what you need. Um, you know, Coach Luca, Coach Theo, we're out. We'll see you in the next episode. Big round fitness and performance.